Greetings, greetings, all my dreamers and dreamettes. It's your boy Mickey Fenty, aka Mickey Made It. If you're new to this channel, you know what to do to this channel. Subscribe right now. And if you want to support the brand, it's inspiredbydreams.shop. And we got everything from hoodies, hats, t shirts, snapbacks, a little bit of everything for you to get your drip on. Okay, today's episode, this is a very important episode I wanted to bring to you guys. All my chat gang, I need you guys to chime in and leave your comments down below. We're talking about people that got roofied. Just understanding how important it is to have loving people around you and people you can trust means everything in these times. These situations happen to so many different people, men and women. So I want people to be alert and know what's going on in these clubs and these lifestyles that they get themselves into and don't know how to get themselves out of it. You guys pay attention to some of these stories. Very touching and keep an open heart and an open mind for the people out there that are victims to being roofied. Okay, let me put this in context for you guys. This Willericho on the side is the one that's doing the roofing. This Willericho in the middle is the one that probably handed him the drugs and is the person that they tried to reach out to on Instagram to see if they knew this Willericho over here. Turns out he does, and then he comes back and says, no, he couldn't have done that because he goes to church. So I want you guys to please stop antagonizing the victim in this situation, which is this wonderful soul right here. And um, please identify who this Wele Meow is with a really shitty soul patch and a snapback at a club. Really, he's giving me incel vibes. We need to find him. He's in Orlando and possibly goes to church. So y'all go to church out here in Orlando or Kissimmee. Look out for this dude. He's dangerous. Also, I want to point out that that guy was actually very persistent all night long and she kept trying to go to different locations and the only reason why she was recording was because she felt safe by the bar with her girls to dance and have a good time because he was on the dance floor trying to grope her, do some nasty shit. And the only reason why he walked away at this point wasn't because she dismissed him, it was because the security guard, the bouncer was right there. Like he was just about to walk up and see what the hell was going on. This is my story of being roofied. Back in my early 20s, I was on a business trip in Fort Lauderdale. I was making a bunch of money. Uh, went out after work and was just being a total douche. I was buying everyone drinks and of course I don't know anyone. Sitting at the bar, talking to the bartender. She's really nice, attractive girl. Introduces me to one of her friends, this blonde girl, unbelievably gorgeous. Exactly what I was looking for at the time. And I'm sitting there talking to her and we're just really hitting it off. Of course, I'm still buying everybody drinks. As we're sitting there, she says, oh, let me introduce you to my brother. So I met this guy, I'm like, oh, hi, nice to meet you, random brother um, person. She says, do you smoke? And I said, no, I don't smoke. Next thing I know, my fingers start burning because a cigarette has been smoked by me all the way down to a nub. So I flash in like, oh, my fingers are burning and then I flash back out again. The next thing I know, I wake up in a beautiful hotel suite, in a hotel I've never been in, right? It's the nicest room in the, in the hotel. It's several different bedrooms, several different bathrooms. I'm fully clothed, in case you're wondering. And I'm thinking, what happened? I look into, in my pockets, there's one, I have one American Express card, all the rest of my cards are gone. My wallet's gone. I think, well, what's going on? I missed my flight, so I'm trying to book a new flight home. I get a ride to the airport, and I check my balances, and thousands and thousands of dollars are, are missing. I'm thinking, what, what happened? I'm still a little bit dazed. My brain is super foggy. When they were able to pull up the ATM video cameras from my withdrawals that I made at several different ATMs, they saw me and the blonde's brother and the blonde and I'm just taking money out just and just handing them money. It was pretty wild. Seven. Uh, my name, make sure you put my name in. If you haven't seen that video, just go back and watch it. It's kind of informational, I guess, whatever. Anyway, so 
the other day, me and my friend went to this bar or whatever. We were sitting beside this girl that was there by herself. We don't know who she was or whatever. You know, kind of had a little conversation with her here and there, yada, yada, yada. So she goes, she leaves her purse with her little wallet and keys and her drink. And she goes, do you guys mind watching my stuff? In my head, I'm like, girl, what? But I said, yeah, that's no problem. That's no problem. When she got up to leave or whatever, I took some of the little bar napkins and I put it on top of her drink because, babe, just because we were nice girls don't mean that you can trust us. Like, I mean, I know I'm not a bad person, but that girl didn't know us from nobody. So watch yourself when you out. Watch yourself when you out. And don't be too trusting. I am so sorry that this happened to you. Here are a couple ways that you can stay safe at the bar. Always, always watch the bartenders make your drink. Do not ever accept a drink from someone that you don't know or someone you do know. A lot of the times, it can be your friends putting something in your drinks. If you decide to put something over your drink, like a nightcap or a stop top, never ever leave it unattended. Always go out with people that you trust and stay aware of your surroundings. What do you have to say? Uh, guys, be careful of your drinks too. Just because you're a guy doesn't mean you can't get drugs. Uh, always make sure you are watching your drinks or you're having close friends watch your drinks because it happened to me, it can happen to you. That's one of at least three or four people that, of our group that was at the 21 Plus Lounge that just got roofied. So we're here taking care of them and making sure they're okay. Mm -hmm. So basically, y'all, I'm getting on here to tell y'all my story from when I had got drugged at a bar in Huntsville, Alabama. So um, I just feel like if something like that happened to you, that shit really can, like, fuck you up mentally if you don't have, like, a strong mindset and if you don't put God first and just keep it pushing. Because um, something like that is not easy, like, y'all. Like, I'm, it's really, like, emotional for me and it's very, like, traumatizing that somebody can that somebody would do somebody like that you know but um like i said you just gotta put god first and keep pushing but um i was traveling for work in huntsville alabama and um i met some really cool people out there or whatever and like i said i'm not like the friendly type like i pick and choose like who i want in my circle and i go based off like energy so i know like you really not type shit. so it was me and this one girl, like, we became cool, like, instantly. Like, we was hanging out. We was hanging with each other outside of work, like, every single day. When I say, like, every single day, every single day. So she was, like, the only person that I just fuck with outside of work. But everybody else, you know, I just associate with them at work. Talk to them at work or whatever. So it was her birthday on a Sunday. She was like, let's go to this bar called Crew. And mind you, like, I already have, like, been to that to that bar before. So I like the bar. So I was like, okay, we can go there. You know, I already been there, you know, whoop, whoop. So, um, so some of the people at the job, they already knew, like, it was her birthday or whatever. So they were like, okay, we're going to come out with y'all. We're going to, you know, turn up or whatever. So I was like, okay. So, um, some people from the job was already there. And, um, the people that mainly said that they was going to pull up, some people came, but some people didn't come. But, um, so me and my homegirl, we got to the bar first and um, we was just drinking, just dancing, having a good time. So some of the people that said that was gonna come, only maybe like four people probably showed up. So it was this stud, this stud girl, this gay boy, and um, two other people that, that we already knew from work that came. So, um, so my y'all, the stud girl, she offered to buy me and my homegirl a drink since since it was my homegirl birthday. So we were like, okay. So I asked for like a um an island, an island drink. Cause that's what I normally get when I go to clubs or whatever. A blue island. I think that's what it called. I don't know. But um so the first drink I had, because I bought it myself, I was feeling fine, y'all. Like I was dancing, having a good time with my homegirl for her birthday. So all of a sudden when the girl, the stud gave me, she gave me my drink first and then she gave me my, then she gave my homegirl her drink. So as I started drinking on the drink, y'all, like, 
it was like in that moment, like I was dancing just normally, you know, just having a good time. But then I started kind of like feeling funny a little bit. Like I started like slowing down, everything was just moving like in slow motion. And all I remember was like, I blacked out. And next thing you know, like, I woke up in my car. But as I'm waking up in my car, I'm still like kind of sluggish. Like I'm everything bleary to me. And I see that the stud is driving my car. But at this point, I don't know. I don't even know what's going on. So, so in that moment, it's like I couldn't really talk. I, was, I wasn't in my right state of mind. And then I'm just like, everything just looked so bleary. So the stud was telling me like, T, your home girl left you with some niggas. She did this to you. She drugged you. She put something in your drink. So I'm helping you. And I had to, I had to carry you out the club. And then she telling me she had to, she had to um, fight my homegirl because my homegirl drugged me. Not only that, she got in my car, tried to steal my car. She tried to steal my credit card. She tried to steal my gun. Just telling me all this type of stuff. So at this point, I'm kind of like believing her because she she's in my car, she's driving me, she's making sure like I'm safe. And my homegirl is nowhere to be found at this point. So I'm just believing everything that the stud girl was saying. Cause I'm just like, okay. So, um, and mind you, like the stud girl, she is someone that I be talking to at work cause she hang, she hang out with us at work as well. So, you know, I'm just figuring out, okay, maybe she is looking out for me or something like that because my home girl did leave me cause she's nowhere to be found. So all I remember was, I was like kind of like in and out. And I remember like, we got to like a stopping point and um, the stud girl like um, pulled me out of the car because I was throwing up everywhere. And then I, I noticed like I was vomiting at the mouth. Like I was choking like real live choking y'all so the stud girl like pulled me out the car and laid me on the ground and as i'm laying on the ground i can see like the foam coming like out of me like i can see it coming out of my mouth so mind you like i couldn't really talk like i can say like a few words but i couldn't really like get get out to what i was trying to say so all i remember was the stud and the stud brother the stud girlfriend they in the in the gay boy they all picked me up and they took me like in that Airbnb and laid me out on the ground. I mean, on the um, floor. And all I can see was they was standing like y'all, standing like surrounded, like above me. Like everybody was just standing around me. And that was like, I can't believe her friend would do her like this. Why would she leave her? So I'm actually thinking like this girl really done left me and done fucking drug me and they had to come and help me. So, um, they put me in the, in the tub, and I remember, like, they were, like, pouring water on me to try to make me shake back. So as I'm shaking back, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to beat that bitch ass. You know, I'm just saying all kind of stuff. So they changed my – and then that's the thing, like, they changed my clothes, y'all. Like, I don't even – like, it's like I kind of remember, but then again, I don't remember, like, how the fuck – because I had, like, a, a, a rumper on, like, an all-white rumper. And I'm trying to figure out, like, when and how did they even take my rumper off while I was in the tub? Because I, I really don't remember. It's like I remember some a little bit, but I don't remember at all. So they put me, like, on a clean T-shirt and some some little boxers or something, you know, because I had threw up everywhere on my clothes. And the stud girl was like, um, give me your phone so you can open up your phone so you can call somebody to come and get you because your homegirl drugged you. She did this to you. So at this point, um, I finally, y'all, uh, got in my phone. It took me like, it took me at least about 10 to 20 minutes to even get in my phone to even, you know, you know to like put in my password and to open up my phone to call someone to come get me. So I called my, my twin sister because she was working she was traveling too, and I had my other two cousins, which they were boys. They were traveling on the road too, with me. So, um, so my sister was like, "Where you at? I'm gonna come get you." So, um, the whole time I'm thinking that the stud, so the stud, she was like, "Give me your cousin or your sister number so I can send him the address." So I said, "Okay." I gave her the number. I'm thinking like she done sent them the address so they can come and get me. So mind you, um, I see that my cousin, the two boys, they pull up like 
they pulled up maybe like in like 10 minutes. They pulled up like fast. So um, I don't think like the whole time, like, you know, they, the girl sent them the address. So, um, so one of my cousins, he got in my car and drove me back to our Airbnb. So when we made it back to our Airbnb, I'm still like throwing up, throwing up, throwing up. So, um, when I got to the Airbnb, they laid me down in the bed. They were asking me what was going on. And I couldn't really talk, so they had to call the ambulance because they, they noticed, like, I was doing, like, not normal stuff. Like, the way how I was talking and the way how I was acting, it was, like, abnormal. So that was they called the ambulance. So the ambulance came and got me and took me to the hospital. They run tests and everything. And, um... So the nurses, they were like, if you would never have threw up what you had threw up, you probably could have passed away. You probably could have died or whatever. So um, I basically threw up a whole shroom. I don't even know how the hell I even ate a shroom. I swallowed a whole shroom about this big, y'all. Then, um, I, to be honest, I don't know what they put in my drink because before I even made it to the hospital, I threw all that up. So when they did do tests on me, they didn't find like nothing in my system. But they did say that somebody like spiked my drink and they gave me a whole shroom. So yeah, it it, it was, yeah, I'm gonna tell y'all, it's so traumatizing. And then like, after that, the next day, um, so the next day I got released from the hospital and as we pulling up back to the Airbnb, y'all, I found the shroom on the ground that I had threw up. So y'all, the next day after I had got released from the hospital, I drove to my homegirl hotel and beat the for her because everybody was telling me that she was the one that drove me. This happened in 2019, October of 2019. All right, I was invited out with some friends. Um, we were going to this Nigerian Independence Day party. Um, girl who invited me, she had a table and everything, so we pre-gamed at her house. Yeah, I had drove, and this was in Chicago. I pre-gamed at her house, and I was going to drive my car, you know, so I could just go straight home after, and they're all like, no, no, we're taking a lift together. Everybody's going together. Come on, let's go. Okay. So we go to the lift. We get in the lift. We go. The party was cool. Everybody was drinking and vibing and stuff. Now, keep in mind, I want to go home at a decent time, so I'm not getting drunk. Like, I'm sipping real slow and just enjoying the vibes. I'm going to tell you where I made the mistake. This was honestly, I could blame myself, but it is what it is. Okay, I asked a friend or a friend at the table, like, hey, can you watch my drink when I go to the, as I go to the bathroom? They watch my drink. I go to the bathroom, come back. Everything's cool. Maybe an hour later, I gotta use the bathroom again. I asked the same friend, can you watch my drink? And I'm not thinking nothing, cause it's like, okay, we're at a table, like no one has access to our table, it's just us, you know what I'm saying? So I go, I come back, I sit down, I sip my drink and I'm just like, wow, this tastes funny. Like set it in my head, like, wow, this tastes funny and blacked out completely blacked out. So when I wake up, cause like I said, I blacked out. I wake up, um, I had no idea where I was. I woke up and there was just like, people yelling in my face. I had no idea what was going on. I just kept hearing, like, get, get up, get the fuck up before we call the police. Like, you threw up everywhere. What's wrong with you? Just, like, yelling at me. And my only response, like, I'm just waking up, like, I didn't throw up. I didn't throw up. I didn't throw up. And it's security guards. This is actually security guards talking to me. And they're yelling at me, telling me to get up and leave before they call the police. So I get up and I leave what I figure out is a parking garage. Have no idea where the fuck I'm at. I literally woke up next to a trash can. My phone was missing, my car keys, my AirPods. Well, no, they took my AirPods out the AirPod thingy because you could track that. Didn't even know that at this time, but hey, they were smart as fuck, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, I walk outside of the parking garage and I have no idea where I'm at. 
So I wander around downtown Chicago for I don't know how long, and I'm just passing people, not even thinking to ask for help. Not one time did I think that, hey, Shanila, stop somebody and tell them they need to call 911. Like, wasn't even in my mind. I'm like, I need to get back to the girl's apartment and figure out, like, what happened. That's what I was thinking. So I wander around. Keep in mind, like, I'm dirty looking. I threw up, so my clothes were soiled. Like, I was a mess. I was a mess. I wander around crying, and no one stops me. <laughs> Literally, no one stops me asking me if I need help or anything. So finally, like, this weird cab driver stopped, and he asked me if I needed help. I let him know I didn't have any money. I was trying to get back to the girls. I let him know the address. And um, he was like, I'll take you. So I get in the car. I'm still kind of, like, feeling whatever was in that cup. And I just, I just, out the mouth, just spilling out the mouth about what happened to me. And this man, he grabs my chest and asked me, do I, do I want to go back to his house? He's like, we can go get you clean. We can, we can take you back to my apartment. Like, couldn't believe this shit was happening. So at that point, I just told him to stop his cab where we were at, and I'll walk the rest. So we were basically at her apartment at that point. Um, I went upstairs. I banged on her door because no one was awake, I guess. I banged on her door, and I was like, I don't know what happened. I think somebody drugged me, and I'm crying and stuff, talking about how I can't find my phone. I was trying to use her phone to track my phone, but like I said, I'm not in my right mind, so I forget how to use Find My Friends. So at that point, I'm like, okay, let me use your phone to call my sister so she could track my phone. As I'm doing that, talking to my sister, telling her what happened, all of a sudden they tell me, oh, we found your phone, we found your phone. Somebody called us back, they have your phone whatever, they said that um, they found somebody trying to steal it in the bathroom. They called me an Uber and put in the address and sent me in the Uber by myself. So I don't know how far it was, but it was on the other side of the city. So I get there and keep in mind, still not in my right mind, so I'm not asking none of the questions that I should be asking, but this girl's downstairs waiting for me, and she lets me know how, I guess she was a bartender at the fucking place, and she found some people that had my phone in the bathroom, and they were trying to unlock it and stuff, so she took it from them. I just said, okay. I said, okay, and I was bawling to her about people stealing my stuff and stuff, and she just went back upstairs. Biggest regret is not calling the police, but um, okay, so I'm on, I'm now on the south side of Chicago, and I call my sister because I'm like, I don't know where I'm at. I don't even have any money to get back to my car or to do anything. Like, I'm stuck. Like, I'm literally stuck. I was stuck, and I didn't know where the fuck I was at, and I was still under the influence, and I had no idea what happened to me. So, um, my sister sent me money to get me a lift. And I got a lift back to my car. I don't know what I th thought I was going to do because they took my car keys. So, um, got a lift back to my car. Um, when I get to my car, for some reason, all of a sudden, I throw up. I threw up, like, foam. It was a yellowy foam. And I've thrown up before, okay? It wasn't stomach acid. I threw up foam. So, at that point... Um, I call an ambulance, I call 911 to come get me, and my parents have been waiting for me to be home all night, so at this point my dad is calling my phone, had already been blowing up my phone, and I just, I was just like, dad, like someone drugged me. He just started bawling, and he was just like, what? So I let him know I was waiting for the cops and the ambulance. The ambulance came, he told me to call him back. I get in the ambulance and I'm talking to the officers and I let them know someone like stole my stuff and how I was at the club and um, I drank my drink and then it tastes funny and then I blacked out and I woke up in a parking garage. Um, they did nothing. They did absolutely nothing. They wrote about the theft, like made an incident of report about the theft and did not write anything about me letting them know I got drugged. 
Um, I made it to the hospital. I was feeling really sick at that point. They gave me fluids and stuff. Um, and I was there for hours. I was there by myself for hours. My phone died at that point, so I was just laying there by myself for hours. I think my parents were upset and stuff, so they didn't come to the hospital until I was ready to leave. But yeah, um, when I was discharged on my paper, it wrote involuntary drug intoxication. So um, whatever was in my system had diluted at the time or dissolved, whatever the fuck, it was gone. So they could not tell me what they gave me. And um, that was it. Uh, a, a detective was assigned to my case and he did absolutely nothing. I think one of my biggest regrets is not going back to that club within the two weeks after it happened because they had cameras. They had cameras over every single table and unfortunately I went maybe a month later and they told me if I would have came in two weeks earlier, they could have showed me the footage and I would have saw exactly who drugged me. But instead, this is what I was left with. I was left with friends who told friends who told me that they left me at the club by myself because I was drunk and I was having a good time. That I told them I didn't want to leave. That's not even me. That ain't me at all. I've never stayed at a party by myself because I'm lit and want to have a good time. That's that's not a thing. So these people all claim, because it was a group of us, they all said that they left me at the club by myself. They all went home together, and no one knows what happened to me. And I have still yet to get answers. So lost in these stories, but when it comes to, you know, just trusting people and having the right people around you, these are the things you have to take heed, man. I tell every everybody just I tell my chat I tell people in my chat all the time it's all about the people that you have around you that's gonna be you know detrimental to how these situations can turn out just having the right person around can alert you from not putting yourself in these positions or putting any things in your body that can be detrimental or leaving you in the hospital so many people nowadays are being fooled into and tricked into doing things that is sad out there people are willing to hurt somebody else's life just to get what they want out of somebody until next time it's your boy mickey fenty aka mickey made it if you're new to this channel you know what to do to this channel